Hello, my name is Mooncat and welcome to the Mughal Empire and welcome to my first day of the settlement. Now usually I do these on beta but I haven't had the time I'm afraid so now I am on my main world and it's time for me to start my first run through on this world. Now the way I usually do these series is that I, throughout the day when I do some stuff like collecting goods or building new buildings, I record, I put them all together at the end of the day and I upload that to YouTube as a daily upload. Uh, we'll see how long the settlement takes but my plan is to make one of these each day for the settlement. Starting with today, and today is going to be uh, quite uh, not a lot of in-game <laughs> footage. So before I jump into the settlement, I would uh, like to give you an overview of the settlement. Uh, kind of go through what you have, the buildings and so on. So let's start with that. So first of all, let's go over the buildings. You have the embassy, of course. It is uh, quite big. It is 9 by 6. Uh, and it produces some rupees, and as we'll see, it also might produce some goods. Uh, but yeah, then you have the usual buildings. You have residential buildings, goods buildings, diplomacy buildings, and roads, of course. So you have three residential buildings. You start with the Bavan. It's two by two, and it has a decent amount of population, 16, and it produces 51 rupees. And... In the beginning, in the first couple of days, in fact, this will be your main source of rupees. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, it makes the start of this settlement very slow, uh, but we'll get back into that. Uh, then you have the Shantigar, and I um, just want to say, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these, I have no idea how you are supposed to do it. This one gives more population, uh, and actually it gives slightly less uh, rupees uh, per tile. If you also consider the time, uh, this takes twice the time to produce these rupees. Uh, although it will probably be around the same, because you're probably able to collect these three times per day. And you will not be able to collect all of these on time. So yeah. And then all the way at the end of the technology tree, you have the Haveli. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to place it or not. You might do for the last quest, but uh, if previous settlements are to go by... You're probably not going to be building this one. Then we have the goods buildings. We have the rice paddy, the sari weaver, the spice trader, and the lotus flower farm. Uh, these are, as you can see, 4x3, 3x3, 4x3, and 3x5. So quite standard uh, sizes, quite normal. We've seen all of these uh, sizes before, so nothing unusual here. They produce uh, the same, same amount of goods as in previous settlements, 5, 10, and 20. And the cost is also the same as uh, in other settlement, settlements that require a uh, normal secondary uh, unit currency to produce. So yeah, nothing really new here. Uh, the new thing with this uh, settlement is in the production buildings and the diplomacy buildings. Uh, here you have both a chain set and a normal set. Uh, so ch chain abilities and set abilities. Now when I first saw this, I was really excited about it, but unfortunately, in my opinion, the implementation is quite uh, quite boring. So, first of all, you have the two chain building, you have the alley and the water canal, and as we'll see in a moment in game, when you connect these on a certain uh, place on the embassy, and if you chain them downwards or sidewards, uh, they will be producing some additional diplomacy in addition to the standard diplomacy they produce. So each of the, uh, both of these uh, has 24 uh, diplomacy as a standard, uh, but if you chain them, uh, you will get additional bonus uh, diplomacy. And this dipl diplomacy will be added to the embassy, so if you connect one of these, the embassy will get 5 uh, additional uh, diplomacy, if you add chain two of these, you will get an additional 10 plus 5, so 15 diplomacy on the embassy. If you have three of these, you will get 30, and so on and so on. And same for the water canal, and we'll see in a moment how these work in-game. And then you have the three set buildings. You have the chartery, which is your main goal early on. You want to unlock this as soon as possible. Sadly, that'll be a couple of days as we'll see in game. So 
each of these buildings, uh, if you connect a unique set building uh, to the embassy, so next to the embassy, the embassy will produce a few additional cultural goods per day. So if you connect one of these, so say you unlock the chart room and connect one of those to the embassy, the embassy will produce five additional goods per day, which is nice, but it's not really a lot. Uh, then if you connect two of these, so the chart room and the baldachin, uh, you produce 15 goods per day from the embassy. And then finally, when you unlock this, this the charbol, if that's how you pronounce it, you produce 40 additional goods per day from the embassy. So uh, overall, and some nice additions, some uh, interesting stuff, but in my opinion, this <laughs> could have been so much uh, more interesting. Anyways, then you have the roads. They cost uh, 200 currency, 200 rupees, uh, which uh, seems to be a standard. They've done that for all but the Viking one, I believe. Uh, then we have expansions, uh, and here, uh, usually, uh, you tend to buy the two cheapest options for each good. And here we can actually see that this is uh, two for bas Basmati, but for the other ones you have three, three, and three. So. In the end, you will probably unlock 11, perhaps even 12, or perhaps even you know, perhaps even 13 uh, expansions. So I would say probably around 12 uh, expansions in total. Uh, you Each expansion will have one impediment. Uh, they are two by one or one by two. Uh, and you'll have in total six uh, removals uh, from uh, the quests. And you will get, it will also be able to buy six with diamonds, which I probably wouldn't recommend that. Uh, so in total, you'll be able to remove around half of the impediments you unlocked for free. So that's the buildings. Let's quickly look at the quests. Uh, so the, ver the first ones uh, we'll do right now. Uh, we'll be able to do a couple of these. Uh, but uh, yeah, actually, I don't think we really need to go over these quests. Uh, here you can see you get the impediment removal. Here we get two impediment removals, actually. And one, and one, and finally one here. And now in terms of the rewards, uh, nothing special. You get some forge points, some supplies, coins, and so on. Uh, you also get some fragments of a wishing well, which is interesting. Uh, which might make this an interesting settlement to play and abort on, uh, uh, on uh, diamond farms. That may, might be an option. You need to do 10 quests, uh, and the 10th quest... Uh, is um, are, you're able to do after you have unlocked the chartery. So this will probably take five, six days, I imagine. So that might be an option. You'll get uh, one wishing well every, let's say, three weeks on a diamond farm. That might be something to consider. Uh, but yeah, for uh, your main world, not too interesting in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that, <laughs> let's move in-game. Let's finally start the settlement and uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's go. One quick thing before I do that, let's just quickly look at the main reward building in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, there are uh, 10 settlements, you will get uh, six upgrade kits. Uh, and at the end, this produces 30 forge points and 15 goods. It's a four by four building, so that is a lot of forge points. So if you are interested in forge points, this is a great building. Um, now for me personally, I'm not too interested in forge points, so for me, not too interesting. I will place it still, it's a really good building, really good stats. Uh, but yeah, not too interesting. Uh, in terms of the time reward, so for the first settlement here you'll see you have 23 days. Uh, and I've heard from people in beta that this is uh, quite easy to achieve, so we shouldn't have any problem with this, I believe. Uh, in terms of the reward, you get the minaret. It has four levels this time. It produces some forge points and some goods, which uh, it's nice, uh, good values. Uh, but again, for me, not really interesting. So with that, let's finally start the settlement. And here you'll see um, amazing looking settlement. I really like the look of this. Uh, and yeah, it's a shame about the gameplay. I'm not a big fan of the gameplay, but the looks of this, it's really, really cool. So uh, let's first uh, look at the, uh, the uh, quests here. 
First one is to get some of these, and before I do place any roads or anything like that, I'll just complete the first couple of quests. Uh, because there is a quest uh, quite soon here, uh, where you need to have three alleys and produce 102 diplomacy. And if you place these alleys down here below the oh, below the settle, uh, below the embassy, sorry, you will get bonuses, and you'll see that three of these chained below the embassy is enough f to get uh, 102 diplomacy. So here we see uh, this uh, settlement is now connected, or embassy is now connected to three alleys, or chained to three alleys, which means it gets 30 additional uh, diplomacy. You can see here. Uh, so here you can see that the first one here, this one gave plus 5, this one gives plus 10, and this one plus 15, so in total these give plus 30 diplomacy. And it's the same with the uh, water canal, uh, which uh, I will unlock uh, later today probably. Uh, that one, uh, instead of placing it down here, you'll see when you get pick one up, you'll see that you get a white space here where you are supposed to place it. The water canal still placed up here or on the other side up here. So uh, we are, have completed this one. And the next one is uh, to gather some uh, goods. So we'll delete these again. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the setup I'm going for uh, is this one here uh, by uh, Uberhelp, which is an improvement on uh, Roku Joe's design here. Uh, so I'll go with this. Uh, I need to place the uh, one, two, three, one, two. I should have looked more, a little bit more into this early on. So this one is supposed to be like that, I believe. Yep. So <laughs> I'll go back and forward a little bit here. Uh, I should have pulled it up on the other screen, perhaps, but <laughs> we'll do it this way. So you, you'll be able to see what I'm doing as well. So like that, I believe. Oh, that's the wrong direction. There we go. So, two and two, two down here, like that. Let's start adding some roads. Uh, so I need two roads over here. Actually, I need to place that one up there. There we go. Then I need three roads down here. Let's build some more of these. So in total, I'll be building 20 of these and one goods building. And 20 of these is just about enough to sustain one goods building, which is quite crazy. And until you're able to unlock the Chhatri, the fourth technology, this is all you're able to do. <laughs> you're not able to produce enough rupees to run more than one goods building. Uh, so in order to unlock the Chhatri, uh, you see that you need around 100 and, what's that, 160 <laughs> goods in total to unlock the chartery and you're only able uh, or all you're able to sustain is one goods building uh, so yeah the start of this is really really slow let's get some more of these goods buildings i believe it was like uh, actually let me check here so one two one two yeah okay I made a small mistake there so this one down here down there, sorry. And we have two roads down here, this one here, and we'll be able to place the rice paddy down there. And let's see at the final. Uh, ah, okay, I messed this up a little bit, so I'll need to <laughs> sort that out. Uh, you know what? Uh, I think what I'll do real quick is I'll pull that up on the other screen. Uh, let's go in full screen here again. <laughs> let's do it this way instead. All right. So now this is easier. So road down there. And then we need uh, this one. <laughs> A little bit confusing to build on top of the settlement uh, of the embassy. I keep calling it a settlement uh, on the embassy like that. I need a road there. Building it there. There. And there. And we need three buildings down here. One, two, three. And one in the middle here, like that. Like that. And like... 
like that. There we go. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 Bavan, Bavans, uh, need one more road there. We have used 14 roads, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so here you can see that I have 3,500 rupees remaining, which is enough to run this for 12 hours. <laughs> After that, uh, all of these here, you can see each produces uh, 51. So if you multiply that by 2, that is uh, <laughs> 1,000, uh, by 20, sorry. That is a thousand and what a thousand and twenty, I believe. Yeah, a thousand and twenty. Uh, so all, all of these twenty here, you can collect that every four hour is enough to run this for four hours. So you have a small buffer in the beginning, uh, but as you start missing a couple of these collections every now and then, you will start eating into this buffer, and eventually you will run out. Uh, now. Uh, as I mentioned, and I need hundred and uh, uh, hundred and sixty goods. So I just want to quickly see you need hundred and sixty goods. If we divide that by five, that is thirty two <laughs> for our productions, which is hundred and twenty eight. Divide that by twenty four, which is around five days. So it's quite crazy. I'm not sure why they <laughs> wanted to make it this slow. Uh, but you'll probably spend at least four or five days simply collecting enough resources in order to unlock uh, unlock the chartery, which is a shame, but that's how this settlement is. Uh, so, <laughs> with that, uh, I'll be back. I'll, I'll put this on uh, in one hour, and then I'll be back in four hours to collect. Uh, and then I think I will end it there. I might do another four hours before I go to bed. I'll have to... <laughs> Decide that when the time comes. As I mentioned, I've started this, or I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I started this recording of this settlement uh, at around uh, seven, uh, five uh, thirty in the afternoon. Uh, so <laughs> much better to start it early on in the day, so you have a lot of time to play with it or to start these productions. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I'll be back <laughs> a little bit later today. Alrighty, it's five hours later and I am ready to collect. Let's see if I'm lucky on my first go. I doubt it. Let's see. And <laughs> of course not, but that's as expected. I only have, yeah, a 3% chance. So uh, I will put it on one more four hour production. That will uh, be completed a few, in four hours, a little bit out in, into the night, but. I'm planning on staying up, staying up for quite some time today, so I'll do one more collection for the day and then I'll put it on 8 hour overnight and we will start again tomorrow. So I will see you in 4 hours. Alright, here we go. It's the final collection of the day. Do we get a nice boost to sign off? No, we don't. Alright, so I'll put this on 8 hours overnight, uh, we've now completed this, so we have one impediment removal, but we will not buy any uh, any uh, expansions yet, so not really useful yet. So, I am able to do this one now if I wanted to, but I don't see any point in doing it now. I'll wait, I'll wait until I can unlock this at least, and possibly yeah, might even wait a little bit longer as well, so yeah. Tomorrow I'll continue collecting, so we'll take it from there. Thank you very much for watching this first day of the Mughal Empire Settlement. And tune in tomorrow where I'll be playing my second day and collecting some goods. So take care and I will see you in the future.